Citizen Kane. Yes, Citizen Kane. What can you say about Citizen Kane? At one time, it was ranked one of the best films of all time. I kind of not got on that bandwagon lately because there's been films later that were probably better than Citizen Kane. But Citizen Kane is a loose version of Ren uh, Randolph Hearst. And a lot of people even had problems with Randolph Hearst because he influenced wars. Again, you, that's taking one side of you. There's always going to be those people who just don't listen to what everybody says. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. You know, Jimmy Stewart, what can you say? He was a guy that when he talked, people listened. This was made in 1939. I remember when that came to television, uh, getting the VCR out and wanting to record this uh, great part of history. You know, in those days, uh, the parties for the working class was something that was uh, everybody wanted to be part of the, the entertainment industry always was well they, we're we're for the working people and Mr. Smith goes to Washington is that way you know we think about the young idealists you know chasing dragons to slay but coming out as a charlatan which is why does this happen because you've got all these lobbyists uh, giving you money to promote their you know agenda whatever have you uh, do you know he's got one purpose in this and that whether I agree with his purpose in this I think it is the reason why we do have a filibuster and I find it so funny that many Democrats want to get rid of the filibuster but the whole democratic process is the filibuster day of the jackal oh the day of the jackal it's been done twice if you learn more about European politics, you probably more about this. But it's the this is a guy who's supposed to be an assassin, and everything he has to do, the politics he has to do, just to kill somebody is just amazing. And you just keep watching it and watching what what's the next thing he's going to do? What's the next thing he do? A lot of what this assassin does is can be traced to what modern. CIA agents get involved with um, on a daily basis and uh, there's more to a CIA than meets the eye uh, but a lot of this can also be thought about you know when how World War One was started was the assassination here we're going back to World War One <laughs> if you like this video give us a thumbs up and join the crew by subscribing the bell the Candidate. I recently watched it's the story of Robert Redford as Bill Clinton. <laughs> How does a man become a political candidate? Well, Robert Redford is that guy. And you watch how the system during those days, how it was played, how it was done. And it's really fun movie to watch. Uh, yeah, I can compare a little bit of uh, the popularity of Bill Clinton and Robert Redford. I see that. Let's get this straight. I want to know what the hell this campaign is. No Way Out, 1987. Another Gene Hackman political film. This guy did probably three good political films that I really, really like. This is more a thriller than anything, but it involves a very important politician. Therefore, it goes into our political list. Clear and present danger. I like this film. And it's very memorable. I like when Harrison Ford stands up to the president. And you really want guys like this. Jack Ryan is more than just a CIA agent after this one. He has to fill in for the CIA director who is sick, uh, James Earl Jones. So Han Solo fills in for Darth Vader while he's sick. And why he's doing that and uncovers a political plot that a lot of people will say mirror probably the war on drugs at the time and a lot of reason why a lot of people have problems with the war on drugs very important film probably a little late by this time not many people were even at least a bit curious of the war on drugs. By the late nine, early 90s, you're like, eh, I knew that. <laughs> but I enjoyed it regardless. 
Wag the Dog. I love Wag the Dog. Wag the Dog is that film where, you know, everybody's good at what they're doing to cover a political scandal. I like it for that sake. Even though their job is not morally right, they're good at what they do. And it can mirror what a lot of people think, how, why, and if wars were covered up, and uh, a lot of questions come in mind. Uh, I don't know. It, it's a fun movie. I liked it. It adds a comedy. It's hilarious. <laughs> Woody Harrelson, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro, uh, Anne Heche. Just a great cast. Love Wag the Dog. It is in my one of my tops. It is probably the top five favorite political movie. Face in the Crowd, my number one favorite political movie. I love Face in the Crowd with Andy Griffith, 1957. And the reason is because it is the first movie that unveils the importance of the entertainment industry and, of course, politics and where they would eventually be in marriage. And I think it was a warning that we have to be careful about the entertainment industry and politics blending together because it they can uh, entertainment figures can be very heavily influential in something that we hold sacred and dear as the politics but it's the same with any ideology I think you can put it for churches as well but those are my favorite political movies check them out watch them Tell me what you think in the comment section what your favorite political movies are. Who's your daddy?